Hey everyone, it's Kayla, and today is Top 5 Wednesday. It's been a long time since I've done a Top 5 Wednesday, but I loved this topic so much. Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey from Ginger Reads Lainey, and now is run by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes. I will leave her channel link below, go check it out, and also a link to the Goodreads group as well for topics and such. And today's topic is the Top 5 Books that you've read because of your platform, because of booktube, or because of blogging, etc, etc. I could make a list of like 30 books that I read because of booktube that I absolutely loved, but today I narrowed it down to six, and to six different genres I tried to represent a little variety in my reading, so let's get started with the list. These are in no particular order because, like I said, I'm representing different genres and, you know, it's really impossible to weigh one against the other, so I'm just going to give you six titles and here we go. The first thing on my list is the Wings of Fire series by 2T Sutherland. This is a middle grade series about dragons and prophecy and political intrigue and it has awesome characters and unique dragon species and... It's just fantastically done, and while it is a little violent, I mean, if the dragons were people, this definitely wouldn't be a middle grade series. I absolutely love it so much. The character development is off the charts, and I just highly recommend it if you love middle grade, if you love fantasy, if you love dragons at all definitely check it out. I first picked this series up because I first heard about it on Connor's channel, Connor O'Brien, and I'm so glad he talked about it because otherwise I probably wouldn't have discovered it for months longer than I actually did, so I really really recommend the Wings of Fire series and it definitely is one of my favorite books that I've read because of booktube and I can't wait to see where the series goes. Currently I believe there's 10 books out and there's plans for five more. I personally think also that the way the dragon species are done, it has great race commentary and society commentary inside the series, so I highly recommend checking it out. The next book I have written down is Homegoing by Yagyasi. This is actually the most recent read on this list. I read it in June this year and I first heard about this from Max from Well Done Books and he absolutely loved it and I was like I really want to check this out and guys it was fantastic. The book starts off following two half-sisters in Ghana in the late 1700s early 1800s. One of the sisters ends up marrying an English slave trader in the nearby castle and the other sister actually gets sold into the same slave trade and they don't know each other by circumstance as you will find out if you read it and then the preceding chapters of the rest of the story tell the story and tale of their generations um, for the next 300 years so it follows a bunch of different characters but because of the actions of their ancestors it trickles down through history and it just says so much about who you are identity race it just says so much about what slavery has done in our country and the world and the lasting impression that it has on society and it just was an incredible read and I want more books like it like it reads like short stories but they're all interconnected and it was just beautifully done and it's a debut novel which blows my mind like I will read the next thing that Yagi Asi puts out for sure. The next thing on my list is The Winner's Trilogy by Marie Rukowski. This is a YA fantasy series. It's more about political intrigue in a made-up world and it has great commentary on slavery and it is just so well done and the romance is so well done and it just made me feel things that I really haven't felt in a very long time. Like the end of the second book, I read it over a year ago and the cliffhanger at the end of the second book literally destroyed me like I cried and I never cry when I read I also love it because the main character Kestrel she's brilliant and badass but with her mind like she doesn't need to kill people she just uses her mind and strategy to advance and I just love that so much I love her character development so much over the course of the three books but it's not your typical YA I'm going to kill everyone haha I'm a badass kind of deal it's more of a subdued calculating kind of thing and I just appreciate that so much and I only read this series because Jillian sent me the first book for my birthday one year Jillian from Bookish and Nerdy and yeah I'm so glad she did <laughs> the next book on my list is On the Island by Tracy Garvis Jives I think that's her name I think I first heard about this book from Lindsay Ray. She doesn't do booktube anymore, but she's on Goodreads. And I'll leave links below to all the people that I mentioned in this video. 
and we were just talking one day about real life issues and such and she recommended it to me. It's about a woman who's 29 and she's kind of lost in life a little bit. She needs some direction so she decides to take a summer and tutor someone in the Maldives. The boy she tutors is 16. He's a cancer survivor and on their way there they crash land on a deserted island and they're there for years. Just the two of them and I just absolutely loved this book. I read it in a day. I'm a sucker for survival stories, like for wilderness survival stories. And then also if you throw in a good romance, and also if you throw in things that make you question your own life, it's a good time, not gonna lie. The final two things on this list, I honestly don't know what I would do without these two things. So I'm so grateful for booktube just for these two things. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. For those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love The King Killer Chronicles and yeah, I'm waiting for Doors of Stone like everyone else, but I mean, I've been waiting for Winds of Winter for a very long time, so it doesn't really bother me. And during my wait, I've been on Reddit and message boards and the Tor reread. I've read it front to back. And the Tor reread, for those of you that don't know, uh, Tor basically just dissects the name of the wind and the wise man's fear and just goes through clues chapter by chapter for the third book and it's just fantastic. Patrick Rothfuss is a genius. Every single word that he writes matters. Whether you think that it does or doesn't, it matters. I feel like reading this series is like looking at an iceberg. You see the 10% on top of the surface and then you dive deeper and there's like 90% of everything else and it's like, whoa. I love Quoth as a main character. That is a really unpopular opinion, but he's clever and he's been through so much and in his cleverness, there's always pride and pride is a downfall and he's only 15 and I just love his character so much and yeah, haters are gonna hate, but that's my opinion. And I love his friendships with Will and Sam at the university. I love the magic system. It is just so complicated, and that's awesome. And I don't know, I just love this series, and I've been rereading it or listening to it on audiobook, and I'll probably listen to them again closer to when Doors of Stone comes out in like 2030 at this point, but that's okay. And now that I've gushed so much about The Name of the Wind, I first heard about this from Kat from The Little Book Owl. Um, and without her, I don't know how much longer it would have been before I discovered the series. And I first tried to read this a year before I actually read it. And I'm so glad I put it down because I was in a reading slump and I wanted to really enjoy it. And I did. And I did. And it paid off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm actually looking forward to Doors of Stone more than Winds of Winter at this point. That's huge for me to say. <laughs> and the last thing on my list is Saga, the comic series by Brian K. Vaughan and illustrated by Fiona Staples. And the reason I put this on my list is because Saga started it all. It was the first comic that I ever read and now look at me. I have like three full shelves back here of comics and graphic novels and manga and it's only because I read Saga. When did I first hear about Saga? I believe I first heard about it from Estelle from Autumn Entha. She doesn't do booktube anymore. She's still on Twitter. Um, she was a really good friend from Japan and she was constantly reading fantasy and comics and I was like maybe I should try this comic thing you know and she talked about Saga she loved it and she normally is very critical when it comes to her reads so the fact that she loves it I was like ooh what is this and I picked it up and the rest is history and so is my bank account but that's okay <laughs> I mean I have better favorites um, than Saga after reading so many comics. However, Saga will always hold a special place in my heart because it was the first comic that I read and without reading Saga, I wouldn't have read anything else probably. So Saga definitely had to go on this list somewhere. And I also heard about it from Priscilla at the Readables. I remember she reviewed it around the same time that Estelle talked about it. Um, so I was like, yeah, I gotta get on the Saga train. So I got onto it during the third volume I think. There's like three or four volumes still that have to come out and I can't wait to see how the series wraps up but yeah I definitely had to have Saga on this list because what would I do without my comics you know? I will forever be grateful for booktube introducing me to comics. Alright guys that's it for this video. I'm sorry if it ends up being long. I just wanted to gush and express my gratitude for all of the things that booktube has made me read and there's plenty more where that came from. Maybe I'll list a couple in the description below as well. Let me know below what your favorite book is because of your platform and I will see you all soon with another video. Bye!